Welcome to Ask a Mortician Death Destination, where I awkwardly insert the word death into another word that it doesn't belong, and we all have some fun whilst facing our inevitable mortality. Today's death destination is Savannah, Georgia, where the people are nice, but the dead are nicer. I'm in the impossibly beautiful Bonaventure Cemetery, which is over 150 years old and was made pop culture famous by the novel Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. All manner of people come to visit Bonaventure, from first-time death tourists, Instagramming the tombs, to local Savannah residents out walking their dogs with their impossible stumpy wigs. In 1867, the famous naturalist John Muir actually spent six days here sleeping at night amongst the graves. He wrote an essay about it called Camping in the Tombs. The most conspicuous glory of Bonaventure this is my John Muir voice, by the way, is its noble avenue of live oaks. They are the most magnificent planted trees I have ever seen. Even those spots which are disordered by art, nature is ever at work to reclaim. The whole place seems like a center of life. The dead do not reign there alone. I may be wandering around a cemetery, but this is an Ask a Mortician, and this is a question that I've addressed in interviews, but never really in a blog or video. Miaz, with two Zs, asks, do you believe in ghosts? If you do, do you believe that they visit you at night because you handle their bodies? Savannah is actually the perfect place to address this because they do not hesitate to play up the supernatural angle. As the woman sitting in front of me on the plane said to her husband, Babe, it's the South, so it's, like, spooky. There is a serious supernatural tourism industry in Savannah. They have tours on trolleys, tours in horse-drawn carriages, tours in hearses, walking tours, walking tours at night, cemetery tours, cemetery tours at night, all on the hunt for ghosts. I am personally not a ghost person. I think that once you're dead, you're dead. Your personality, yourself, who you are, that happens in your brain, and when your brain dies, you die. So when I'm working with dead bodies, sometimes they're creepy in sort of a decomposing face mold sort of way, but they're not creepy for me in a like, maybe they might follow me home and watch me while I sleep until I avenge their murder sort of way. But in the interest of keeping an open mind, and on the night of a full moon, no less, I went on a ghost tour at the Sorrel Weed House, allegedly one of the most haunted places in Savannah. Legend has it that Matilda Sorrel found her husband Francis in the passionate embrace of their slave, Molly, who our tour guide called a trusted servant, by the way. Overcome with grief at the betrayal, Matilda threw herself from the second-story balcony, falling to her death in the courtyard below. Two weeks later, Molly hung herself in the carriage house. Suicide or murder to cover up the affair? Our guide also gave us EMF, or electromagnetic frequency readers, that were supposed to blink red when a ghost was nearby, gathering energy to manifest. When we stepped into the carriage house, under the beam where Molly was said to have hung herself, the EMF reader started blinking wildly. The people on the tour genuinely loved this. They were like, Molly, Molly is here. So you're telling me that Molly, a slave who was potentially murdered, now has to hang out for the next 150 years entertaining 21st century paying tourists. That, my friends, is a level of hell that Dante forgot. So the difference between dust and spirit orbs are that the dust and pollen is a perfect circle. It's transparent. Make no mistake, there is a formula for ghost tourism. Let's see if we can recreate it. First, we're going to need an old-timey house, preferably one with some Civil War-era provenance. Now, this house had to have somebody die in it, preferably a long time ago, preferably violently, preferably a woman wearing white. 
she'll need to show up and gently move curtains and chairs and appear in mirrors. Then we'll need to bring in a team of paranormal research scientists to use scientific equipment to measure fields and forces and stuff. Finally, we'll need to choose a super spooky font to advertise our tour, like this one. Or this one. Charge 25 bucks a head and boom, you've got yourself a Savannah ghost tour. Ghosts are terrifying and exciting at the same time. We like to be freaked out. We wouldn't watch horror movies in The Walking Dead if we didn't. But for some people, even scarier than ghosts is the idea that death is real. It's final and we don't get any more chances. Savannah is no doubt a city of death. It saw battles in the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, a yellow fever epidemic that wiped out a thousand people in a week. Geographically, it's not that big, so you can't even swing a dead cat without landing on some paved-over 200-year-old burial. But does being on all those dead people really necessarily mean ghosts and hauntings and angry spirits? Or could the whole city just be a memento mori, a reminder that we too will die, and while there are dead people underneath our feet, we are alive. Alive, I say. <laughs> So I'm in a big old southern house filled with things like this. <laughs>